This is lesson three of unit six. In this lesson, we'll talk about something called Lewis structures. Now, these will be drawings of molecules, and the man that came up with it was Mr. G. N. Lewis, an American chemist. Very important structures that he came up, uh, essentially how to draw molecules. So, let's get to it. First of all, let's identify uh, the simplest version of this, and that is drawing the Lewis structures of individual atoms. This is pretty simple. Uh, you write the atomic symbol, and then you put dots around the atom. The dots represent valence electrons, which, remember, are the S and P electrons. So, if you take a look at phosphorus, phosphorus has five valence electrons, so you would put one, two, three, four, five dots around phosphorus. Magnesium has two, two. Fluorine has seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, you'll notice that we try to put the uh, dots as far as possible from each other, especially in the case of magnesium. Notice they're on opposite sides. That's to represent the fact that electrons repel each other. You always want to do this. You want to put them as far as possible from each other. You'll also uh, see that we double them up. After you've put four around each side, then you begin doubling them up. And this is because these exist in orbitals. If you remember, each orbital had two electrons possible. And we will first fill, if you recall, the orbitals with a single electron, and then, only then will they double up. And there are four possible sides to every Lewis structure. Uh, every element has four possible sides. And you'll see for a total possible of eight electrons. And we will see in a minute why eight electrons is the magic number. So what we'll do is the drawings uh, themselves then will, when the elements bond, the elements will bond by combining their valence electrons. So each element brings to the bond its own number of valence electrons, like phosphorus here and fluorine. And then phosphorus and fluorine will share these electrons so that each element becomes like a noble gas. Now noble gases have eight valence electrons, and that's why each one of these will try to have eight. What you'll see is that fluorine here, if you count, has one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this line will represent two electrons. And likewise for this fluorine, likewise for this fluorine. So this is what these structures will look like. This is what we're going to draw by the, uh, by the time, we're, uh, time we're done with it. What governs this whole idea is the octet rule. The octet rule, the word octet, refers to eight, and it refers to eight valence electrons. So every element bonds to have eight valence electrons to be like a noble gas. And this concept we've uh, mentioned many times before. So um, eight is going to be the magic number for all these elements. Now, except hydrogen, hydrogen will only have two. And that's because hydrogen wants to be like its noble gas, helium. And helium only has two electrons. It does not have eight. So it's the exception. So let's break down a little more what these Lewis structures will look like. You see three Lewis structures here. The dots represent valence electrons, and the lines will represent bonds. Each line actually represents two electrons. So let's analyze how each one of these compounds obeys the octet rule, or how each element obeys the octet rule. Notice this fluorine right here has one, two, three, four, five, six, and then each line has two electrons, so seven, eight. We have eight valence electrons. He's nice and happy, like noble gas. Notice this nitrogen, one, two, we said these two, so that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nitrogen has eight electrons, and these three fluorines are, uh, two fluorines are actually the same as the one on the left. They also each have eight valence electrons. Everybody's obeying the octet rule. You'll notice that down here, if you take a look at this sulfur on the left side, it has one, two, three, four, and then each one of these is two electrons, so five, six, seven, eight. Definitely obeying the octet rule. This sulfur is really the same exact thing except on the other side, so it is obeying the octet rule. Carbon, if you take a look, has one, two, three, four, and then each one of these lines has two valence electrons, so five, six, seven, eight. It is obeying the octet rule. And finally, in this structure, carbon is obeying the octet rule. We can see the eight electrons around carbon. Each hydrogen is obeying its version of the octet rule by having two electrons. Hydrogen wants to be like helium again. So we will uh, show you how to draw all these structures. We'll actually go through the rules of drawing them, and then 
will present a few examples. So here are the rules. Don't worry if the rules seem confusing at first. They will clear up once we do some example problems. The first thing we do is find how many total valence electrons there are in the whole molecule. So if you, for example, have the molecule water, H2O, you'll count the valence electrons that come from oxygen and that come from hydrogen. You'll total them up. Then you will arrange the atoms around one another. Here it says the least electronegative element goes in the middle. So, except hydrogen. Hydrogen can never go in the middle because hydrogen can only have two electrons around it. The reason the least electronegative element goes in the middle is because electronegative elements, remember, want electrons. So if you're in the middle, your electrons will be pulled away from you. So if you want electrons, you will not go in the middle. And you'll see this as we play it out here. That's rule two. Rule three, we will then connect all the atoms by lines. Again, a line is a bond of shared electrons. And then we add the remaining electrons around every atom so that every has eight and hydrogen has two. Now, if it turns out, the next rule says, if it turns out that there aren't enough electrons on an atom, then we will proceed to make double bonds and triple bonds. We'll make um, some atoms share four electrons or up to six electrons. And then you'll, you'll see this play out here. Once you're finished, it's a good idea, just like in math, they taught you to check, and you check by counting to make sure that every element has eight. Everybody's obeying the octet rule. Um, and then the, the total number of valence electrons also matches. Okay, so again, these rules, I know we flew through them pretty quick. Refer to them back as we draw the actual structures. We're actually going to do three example problems and then we'll practice a bunch of these in class. So why don't we do this example problem? Draw the Lewis structure for NF3. The first step is set to count the valence electrons. So if we take a look at nitrogen, nitrogen brings five valence electrons. Um, remember the reason you know this, you can take a look at the periodic table and you'll find nitrogen has a five above it. Or nitrogen has two in the S and three in the P. That's the other way of thinking about it. Each fluorine brings seven valence electrons. Fluorine is actually in group 17 or 7A. Now there are three fluorine, so we'll actually add seven three times. So let's total that up. Seven times three is 21 plus five. We should have 26 valence electrons total. So here are how many electrons the whole molecule brings to the bond. We cannot have more or less than 26. Rule number two said put the least electronegative element in the middle. Of these two, the less electronegative one is nitrogen. Remember that fluorine is the most electronegative of them all. It will never be in the middle because that means if it goes in the middle, its electrons will be pulled off of it, which it does not like to do. Let's put nitrogen in the middle. And then it says go ahead and put the rest of the uh, atoms around the nitrogen. So I'll put a fluorine on the right, fluorine on the left, fluorine below. There are four spots on every element. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if you put it above or below as long as you just have a maximum of four spots. You then connect everything with a line. Remember, a line means two electrons. So counting, so far, we've put one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. What we'll do is we'll continue placing electrons around the outside atoms first, around fluorine first here. And we'll count until we get to our total, which is 26. Let's try this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Once all the outside atoms are filled, we can go ahead and come inside and do the inner atom, and that will give us 25, 26. Notice our 26 valence electrons have been completely distributed. We can now check to make sure every element has 8 electrons. Take a look at this fluorine. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This works. We have this compare, uh, take a look at this nitrogen. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That matches. This fluorine is the same as the one on the left. That matches. And this fluorine is the same as the one on the left. That matches. So we have done this structure. We have drawn it properly. I know this went quick. We did this pretty quickly. Uh, we will have a few example problems for you to practice and then we'll practice this and practice this in class. Let's try one that has hydrogen in it, the famous molecule H2O. So again, let's total up the number of valence electrons that they bring. Each hydrogen brings one valence electron. So we have two hydrogens. 
whoops, which means we'll have to add one twice, one plus one, because we have two hydrogens. Each oxygen, if you take a look, brings six from the periodic table, for a total of eight. So we have eight valence electrons that we can uh, put around the molecule. Okay, the second rule says decide who goes in the middle. In this case, hydrogen cannot go in the middle, so it must be oxygen that goes in the middle. Put the two hydrogens around oxygen. Usually you put it on the left and on the right. Connect them all with a line, which represents two electrons. So far, then, how many electrons have we placed? One, two, three, four. We have to get up to eight. Now, I cannot add any more around the hydrogen because hydrogen can only have two. The rest of the electrons will actually go around the oxygen. We have distributed four. There are four left, so we'll put two on top, two on the bottom. And that notice gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oxygen obeys the octet rule as required. So if you take a look, oxygen has eight valence electrons. Hydrogen obeys the octet rule because it has two electrons. It only needs two. This hydrogen likewise. So we have done this correctly. All right, let's show you one that uh, requires a double or triple bonds. This will be the last example here. And we're asked to draw the low structure of CO2. Same principle, let's count up the total valence electrons. From carbon come four. From each oxygen come six. You have two of them. We have 10 for a total of 16. So you have 16 valence electrons to distribute. Rule number two says decide who goes in the middle. In this case, the less electronegative element is carbon. The reason we know that is because carbon is further away from fluorine. Oxygen is actually much closer. So carbon is further away. It is less electronegative. Carbon goes in the middle. We will then put the two oxygens around the outside, connecting them all with lines. And let's start putting electrons around the outside until we get to 16. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 so far. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Keep going and doing the next oxygen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, I've exhausted all my electrons. I have 16 around the whole molecule. However, if you take a look, carbon is not, does not have an octet. Carbon only has 1, 2, 3, 4. This is not good. Now, I cannot simply draw in two more electrons here and two more electrons there. That's because they never brought that many electrons. I've exhausted, I've distributed all my possible electrons. So what do we do? Anytime a middle element does not have enough, this is when you begin to draw double bonds and triple bonds. So here is what we will do. We will ask this oxygen to share two of its electrons. And we will ask this oxygen to do the same. What this does is this does not reduce the number of electrons oxygen has. Notice oxygen has eight already. If we take a look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By moving them on the inside, oxygen still has access to them, but this allows then carbon to have access to them. And this is how we will solve this problem. We will pull this on the inside, we'll make it into a line, and then we will erase these electrons. Apologize there, a little more got erased than it was uh, intended. And we will do the same thing on the left side. We'll draw this line. And then why don't we erase, being a little more careful, these two uh, electrons. So now if you analyze it, it all works out. Carbon on the inside has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It obeys the octet rule. Oxygen on the left side has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It works. This oxygen likewise has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This works. So double bonds come into play whenever an element does not have enough electrons. You'll have to practice these out. In fact, here are a few for you to practice out before uh, we reiterate this in class. So try all three of these on your own. Try to draw their structures. And let me give you a little bit of a clue. This one, whoops, this one here will have a double bond. So watch for double bonds in this one. These two will have single bonds. All right. Hopefully that uh, made sense. This completes for us lesson three of unit six.